everybody, I'm Cassandra Donnelly from Creative Passages and today I want to show you how to make these cute little cards. They're really nice for just all occasions as thank you cards or encouragement car cards or get well cards or thinking of you cards. Um, you can also make it for special occasions like I, I made like sort of greenish batch that I think might make good Christmas cards. I'm going to show you how I made these. It's so easy to do. You're going to need some watercolor paper. So it really doesn't matter what size watercolor uh, paper you're going to use other than it has to at least be 4 inches by 11 because that's going to be the size of your card. But I like to work on larger batches and then cut the cards down after my watercolor paint dries. Of course, you're going to need watercolors. This is, I tried out a new watercolor set. It's Gonse Tambi watercolors, and it's a really thicker, more opaque watercolor than is typical. I also used Color Splash watercolors. It comes in all different colors. I personally like the liquid watercolors a little bit better than regular watercolors, although I use both. You're going to see me use both of these. Um, not necessary, but if you see something you don't like, like a spot that you don't like, you can embellish it with some oil pastels. And so you're going to see me add some embellishments or some corrections uh, to some of the cards, although I didn't have to do that. I just wanted to and then you're also going to need some cute little ribbons to add on to your cards and that to me is one of the funnest things so we're going to paint the outside of the card we're going to paint the inside of the card we're going to fold it these are four by eleven cards and then we're going to add ribbons and i'm also going to show you how i added these salt crystals and how i added the saran wrap um, design to it so this is so easy to do you can do a big batch of it in fact it's hard not to do a big batch of it because it's so fast and easy to do although you are going to need some drying time in between the layers so you're going to need to um, paint both sides of the the card the paper the watercolor paper let it dry and then um, fold it, which I'm going to be showing you, and then add your ribbon. But it's that easy. So step one is painting your watercolor paper. Now paint all of it, all right? Then you can sprinkle some salt on it and you can add some saran wrap to it. I did both, I'm gonna show you. Um, the salt will just crystallize the paint. Let me show you a good example, like right here. It's gonna crystallize it. The saran wrap will make these interesting little marks on it. It will kind of lighten it up in some ways okay so it's gonna take some time to make this you're gonna need at least two different days or a full day because once you paint one side then you're gonna let it dry so let's open this set up here see what we got wow it's so interesting I've never seen a watercolor set like this okay now what I recommend is that we get the, the paper wet first, okay? This is so easy, it's amazing. We're going to get the paper wet. I'm thinking I'll do maybe just a couple colors of, of this. Um, but first I'm going to do the regular watercolors. And by the way, I might throw in a few acrylics. Um, just to get some kind of gold and bronze colors. These are just uh, craft paints. Glitter, and this is um, 
forget what brand that is. Okay. We're also going to need uh, a stash of ribbons. I like to cut some of my ribbons down. But of course I've got all kinds of other ribbon colors in here. And um, you're going to need a hole puncher as well. And of course your watercolor brushes. You don't need a fan brush, but uh, it might be nice. So, we've already got some color that spilled on there, so I'm going to give my water jug a little bit closer to me. Alright, so what I like to do is just kind of dip my brush in here. I was going to do Christmas, but I automatically went for the pink. Ooh, and see, the thing is, this is kind of wet on wet technique when your paper's wet and then you drop the watercolor it automatically starts to splatter and what you can do then is add some other colors oh this is so much fun and watch them all just disperse Ooh. <laughs> i love painting so uh, you can add a little bit more water to spread it all out well, this is a very unique color palette so I like to use like multiple colors. Here's a purple. And so I'm going to continue just kind of dropping the colors in. And I feel like I want this color right here. Lately I've really been about this, this color. I don't know why. It's sort of like a pinky rust color. I have a feeling this is going to be really pretty. Let's throw in just a little bit of green here. Mm, more blue. It's sort of a pretty shade of like a grayish turquoise blue. I want this color too. You see how because my paper's wet colors are spreading out. I feel like I need more of that green over here. And more blue. This is that grayish blue. Let's throw in, oh, you can tell I like colors. Let's throw in some of this greenish color. And more purple. Let's do purple. 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 So now, you see how fast that was, right? Doesn't look like anything yet. I'm going to flick some water on here. So I'm dipping my brush in the water and I'm just going to add some flickers. You see it's doing some interesting things. Also, another thing I can do is flick some colors. Let's see. Uh, let's do this dark turquoise color. bit more diluted than that. Um, and I feel like I want some this color. And if you feel like you get too much of any one color, or you feel like you get carried away, which I think I got a little carried away there, you can always dab it up with a paper towel. And then this is the fun part what you can do there's a couple things you can do one is you can drop some salt crystals on it and um, you want to drop the salt crystals on it while it's wet if it's dry already it's not going to do anything um, when it's just um, well, you know what? I don't really worry about the timing. Some people worry about the timing and say it should just be not freshly wet, but just dried for like maybe a minute and then you put it on there. But I find if I just, when it's wet, put it on there and it works pretty well. So then what you're going to do is you're going to let it sit. So next I'm going to show you the color splash, which honestly I think produces fantastic results, more better than regular watercolor, but you do have to dilute it. So I'm going to put some in here. 
really doesn't take too, too much. So, got the green. Let's try to do Christmas theme. I'm going to add some water to it. Other one, and then the big one maybe we'll do like yellow or something. I'll just do it. I'm gonna put the green and red together. This is looks like a red, and there's a bit to this one. these little jars from the Dollar Tree. But I don't have enough right now to do a bunch of colors. You don't have to have a spray bottle. You could just do, if you have a, a bunch of small containers, you could do that. I might have possibly deleted it too much. Okay. And let's do so that is that's it. Let me see. This is orange, I think, and this is yellow. That's orange. This is yellow. Again, do the same thing. I'm going to wet my paper. So with these cards, a lot of them I use the metallic uh, color splash, which I don't currently have. But there was, you know, other colors in there too. So that is partly why, you know, the colors are so beautiful. But regardless of what kind of paint you have you're going to get you know different effects and it should it should still be beautiful now this one that we just did you can see already where the salt is starting to crystallize see the salt is what forms these little um white um, almost like little crystals so you can see where the blue is doing that right here so it's gonna be pretty when it dries. That one's gonna be more like a soft. Oh, that one would be pretty for like a baby shower or something. So I'm getting this one wet. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you these. I was thinking maybe we don't wanna do green and red together, but maybe we do, we'll get a little brown, you know. Let's, um, <laughs> So I spray that. So the amount that I put with the, the red, the, you don't have to be precise. Of course, the more liquid you're going to have, the, the darker it's going to be. The, and these things go a long, long way. And I'm going to do some yellow. Ooh, okay. This one doesn't come out very easily. Um, I'm going to spread that color out a bit. 
to because it lets quite a lot of come in there. Now, I feel like I could stop here, but I feel like I need a little bit. So, I'm going to use some of this gold. No, I don't want this gold. This one's kind of thick. It's too thick. So, I'm going to use some of this gold. And I'm just going to put a few drops on here. This is kind of thick, but I like... Ooh, that's a little probably too much. I'm going to spread that out. Normally, uh, well, it might be better if I had it diluted first. But, in fact, I have so much paint on here. What I'm going to do is... See, I don't have any more containers. That's why I just put it in there. I'm going to put some of that gold onto the other piece. See, what's nice about these cards is you don't have to do anything like very precisely and they still turn out beautiful. And if you get too much liquid, like with the liquid uh, watercolors, it's really easy for you to get too much. What I like to do if that happens is go like this and kind of put, you see how it's all squishing out there on the edge? Just fill up a whole nother sheet with color. All right, but I'm not satisfied with this yet. I do like how the, the gold and the red are mixing. I do want to experiment with a little bit of green. I know green and red makes brown, but I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit of brown in here. I don't know why people are so against like green. I mean like so against brown. I don't know why. But I feel like this needs more color. I really want more more of those colors. Um, let's see what happens if don't now see I like that green in there. I think that was pretty. Now let's throw in some turquoise. These heavy thick colors. They don't move as well as the uh, liquid ones. Let's just put a blob here. And a blob here. Hmm. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. I just want this color in a little bit. And I really want more red. I really probably should dilute that gold because I want it to be a little bit more. Oh, you know what I could also do is I could take I could take acrylic inks as well, but I don't have um, I don't have a gold acrylic ink. This one is I dropped my glasses. Um, this is Daler Romney. This is permanent shimmering green. Okay. So that would look cool. So again, I got a little bit of a lot on there, so I'm going to add some of this. Hmm, interesting. Okay. And I'm gonna spread this out just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and take my my gold. Let's try this one. Put it in here. And add some water to it. 
so we can move around. I think this is a different shade of gold than I had before. I'm going to do some splatters on it. So I'm going to show you another tick. I kind of like these colors. These are pretty. Let's sprinkle some salt on it. Um, But I'm going to show you another technique where we take saran wrap. Okay. Saran wrap. I'm going to take a big chunk of it. Unless it's one falling off. And I'm going to punch it all up. And I'm going to set it on here. What this is going to do is create lots of like interesting ways. move it around and make interesting. You can kind of see how it kind of moves the paint around. So it's gonna it's gonna dry like that. Okay, so I'm gonna set that over here. So now I'm just gonna finish up the rest of these really quick. Speeding this up by 600% because I already showed you how to do it. But I thought it might be fun to watch me make all the rest of them because they're just so fun and fast and easy to make. So enjoy.
the next day there's this one the salt needs to come out but these wrappers need to come off and it's still wet but it's the, the wrap has been on it long enough so we need to let it dry This one didn't have the wrapper. I might even set these outside. That's kind of cool looking. Can't wait to take the salt off. It's got to be a little bit drier. too much. All right, so this is the part where I have to fix the parts that I rubbed off too much and any other little spots that I didn't like. So I'm actually using Distress Oxide eggs and my Pan Pastels. And then um, because it was so loose, the paper was, I decided to add the Mod Podge to see if I could kind of make those loose pieces that sort of were rubbed and rough uh, more smooth with the Mod Podge wasn't necessary but I thought it would just you know make it a little bit better so I'm now using the oil pastels over any spots I don't like again this totally isn't necessary but um, <laughs> that's what I wanted to do I wanted to embellish it I wasn't hundred percent pleased with this particular one and I just wanted to make it better so um, that's what I'm gonna do for the rest of these again I have the speed up at 600% because um, I don't think you need to watch me at normal speed do this part but I am including it in there just so you can see what all is involved um, when I make these cards or what you might want to do possibly um, it's pretty easy to get a successful card but sometimes you know you might be more pleased or less pleased so you can always do things to improve the quality of your car to make it better so that's what I'm doing here um, and I love the effects of melting the oil pastels with the heat gun so that's what I'm doing and so I'm basically gonna just fix all the cards the same way
Next, we need to paint the inside. And don't worry about the spots that you see here. So I'm gonna just come up with this color right here. Because these spots um, are just gonna be part of the character of the cards and it honestly doesn't doesn't really take away from the card you know it still looks cool I might keep this one simple When you're doing the inside, you um, have to keep in mind that people might want to write, or you might want to write your messages on the inside, so you don't want the colors too dark. And if you have too many colors, it might be hard, let's say if they choose a blue pen, but you've got pink, blue, red, like the blue pen might not show up over the blue, so you, you want to just keep that in mind um, when you're doing the colors. You, sometimes I do more more than one color but I try not to go overboard so that uh, somebody might choose a color that they can see you know when they go to right on top of it it's really just that simple down to 11 by 4 inches. So this itself is 12 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut it down to 11. You can just 
scissors, but if you have a cutter, this will be better. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut them all down to 11 inches long. Don't throw away your scraps, it's good clush butter. All right, next, got them all cut down to 11. I want to cut them to four inch wide strips. So, that's 11, right? We need to go this way. And we have nine inches. So that means I'm gonna get two cards out of here. Four and four with one inch left over. So, consider what parts of your paper are the prettiest. Okay. I'm gonna do that. Four inches. Four inches. I could technically, if I wanted to, make a five inch card, but I like, I like the four inch size. So now we have all our strips and what we're going to do is we're going to fold them. But before we do that, I recommend you take a piece of paper or a chipboard, tag board or something like that. And um, these cards are four inches wide across. So this should also be four inches. And what I recommend is that you divide it up into two inches right there. And then put your holes a half an inch apart from there. Punch your hole with your hole puncher. Okay, we got this there. And then use this as your templates, okay? But first we're gonna fold it up. So I'm gonna lay this right here. I'm going to, this little end is, is going to fold over. This is like our, our template here. Okay, so we don't have to be too precise, but we're going to go like this, and then like this. We want a little bit of gap from here to here so that when I punch the holes, the holes won't um, puncture this part right here. Okay. Do this. All right, now, it's just a matter of finding a pretty ribbon to go with. This ribbon. Do we want this ribbon? Do we want gold ribbon? <laughs> you know I'm all about the gold right now. Okay, so we're gonna need some scissors. And let's say this doesn't have to be too precise. I usually get it too long and then I trim it down. So you're gonna go from the back and you're gonna push it through like that. And then you're going to line this up here. Like this. 
One knot will do unless it's the type that seems like it's going to come undone quite easily. Sometimes I dress it up with some glitter glue or puffy paint. This is uh, diamond tulip puffy paint. So let's go ahead and do that. You can do it after the ribbon, but it's a little easier to do it beforehand. Let it dry so the ribbon doesn't, you know, mess it all up. I usually just put it right here on the border. Just like that. This is good. Dresses it up just a little bit, but it's not necessary. Sometimes you can take old artwork like this. This is just a watercolor painting. Might have been an experimentation or an old collage like this. This actually would make a nice, nice card. Doesn't look that like anything really for an artwork, but it's very decorative. So it would make a nice background for maybe a journal page, or I would probably cut this down. And I could make a card out of it, and it would make a really, really nice card. Um, kind of see what it would look like here. So I might do that. Okay, I'm going to show you that as well. 